Okay, so let's go over Whiskey's commands so we can stay consistent at home. We want to reward the behaviors that she does correctly or when she does the command that we're asking to increase the rate of her listening to our commands. We also want to use these training tools to follow through when she doesn't listen to our commands so that we can stay consistent and decrease the rate of her not listening or not following the commands that we give her. So let's dive into her training equipment so we can stay consistent at home. So we have her collar here. This is her remote collar. She needs to wear this every day so we can stay consistent. On the collar we have a little red dot right here. That is a magnetic key to turn on the collar and the remote has a matching red dot on the side. What we're going to do is we're going to touch the two together and you're going to see a green light and that means the collar's on, charged, and ready to go. So it'll flash green every few seconds to let you know that the collar's on, charged, and if it starts flashing a different color like orange or red, that means we need to charge it. It should last about two days on a charge. So then we have the remote back here, the on-off button. We're going to push and hold that until the screen lights up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the black S button. When we are working with Whiskey, she has the choice to follow the command we give her or not. So she has to understand that at home there, there's consequences for her actions. If she does the command, great. Trees, pets, praise, we're going to reward that. If she does it, if she chooses to ignore the command or not do the command, we are going to follow through and she still has to do the command anyway. So we use this to decrease the rate of her not listening to our command. So we're going to focus on the black S button. Let's talk about loose leash walking for a sec. So when we ask her to heal with us, heal means walk next to us on the left hand side with a loose leash. 80 to 90% of your walk should be in the heel. The other 10 to 20% you can tell her free and she can go sniff. So in the heel, she needs to be next to us. If she starts to walk too fast or pull us in any way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell her no. So we're marking the incorrect behavior with a verbal no reminder and then we're gonna follow through with the black S button and then tell her heel. So it's no button heal. I can feel that. It's a little stimulation. It's meant to discourage her from not doing the commands. It's not meant to be painful or anything like that. It's just meant to be a little reminder for her. So again, no correction. We give the command. Heel means walk next to us on a loose leash. So let's talk about her other collar as well. So this, we're going to use this whenever we have the leash on whiskey. So the first couple of days that you have her home, I recommend having the leash on in the house so that you can guide her to the command that you want her to do, whether that's place, sit for door manners, or anything like that, especially when guests come over. So we can guide her a little bit more with the leash rather than just relying just on the remote collar, especially in the beginning stages of training. When we taught Whiskey all of these commands, the leash came first, the remote collar came second, so this is more familiar to her, and it should be like our default when we're introducing something new. So how to put this on Whiskey? What we're going to do is we're going to hold one link steady, and then this link has to go down and pop off, put it around Whiskey, and then we're going to squeeze this link to put it together. It's about technique, not strength. And then we're going to attach the leash to the D ring or the one that swivels, not the circle. So when she's wearing this leash, when you put it on her, she has so much hair around her neck. You want to make sure that the chain is up top, kind of by her ears versus under her neck or anything. So it's a little challenging to rotate because her hair is just so thick. So when you put it on, you want to make sure that the chain is already towards the top of her head so you don't have to rotate through all of that hair. So we have the leash. This should not have constant tension on it. It should be nice and relaxed. We only need to use it as a pop and release as needed. Same thing with the remote. We have her in a heel, for example. We're walking, she starts to pull ahead. No, use the button on the remote, tug, heel. It's a little reminder to say, hey, back up a little bit. So sometimes if you don't have the remote in your hand, you have the leash to use. If you don't have the leash in your hand, you have the remote to use. So you can use them both together or one at a time. It just depends on the situation. So no, pop, heel. We always let her know, hey, the action that you just did was incorrect by saying no. We're going to follow through and then we're going to remind her of what she should do by saying the command again. And then, of course, we're going to reward her like crazy when she's doing the com command correctly. Praise, pets, treats. Those are the best way to reward whiskey. That way she understands that what she's doing is 
is appropriate and to keep doing that behavior. So while you're on a walk, good heel, praise, give her a little pat on the head, give her a little treat, good heel, and let her know that she's doing the command correctly and then just use these as needed. So let's move on to sit. Sit means stay is implied until she is told free. So we use this for door manners. When you walk up to a door, you have her sit, or when you're on your walk and you stop at a crosswalk, have her sit. That way you could tie your shoe and she's not bouncing all over the place. So we go up to a door, sit, we open the door. Whenever a distraction happens, we want to remind her to stay in the command that she's in. So for example, we walk up to the door, we have her sit. When we open the door, sit. We're reminding her that, hey, even though this motion is happening, I want you to stay in that position. And then she is she understands to stay in that sit until she is told free. That doesn't mean she might make a mistake once in a while. So she might get up, no, pop the leash, button as needed, sit. And then when you're ready to go through the door, it's free or heel through the doorway. And then we have down. Again, down and place and sit all means stay is implied until she is told the release term free. Free means you don't have to be in any specific command. You are free from that command. You can get up and kind of move wherever you need to be. So with down, we don't free from a distance. We always go back to her, tell her good down, reward, and then tell her free. So with down, if she doesn't listen to the command, no, correction, down if she gets up from the command or if she doesn't lay down when you ask her, or we can use the leash and pull slightly downward. You don't have to bend all the way over, just a little tug towards the ground while standing up down. So if she gets up before you say free, no, follow through, down, she has to stay until you release her with the free term. So we have her stay, we do our distractions, we go back to her, tell her she did a good job, reward, praise, pet, then we tell her free, that way she knows to stay in that down until we come and get her again. Same thing with place, place is going to be the popular command to use when people come over, that way she's not jumping and getting all excited, so we put her on place. As long as all four feet are on the boundary, she is on place. She can stand, sit, or lay down. We encourage calm behavior by rewarding that a little bit more often. So when she's laying down, we reward with more treats. But whenever we do place or down, we reward low. So on the place bed, we put the treats on the bed. That way she knows the bed is the positive zone. And she wants to keep all four feet on the boundary. For down, we just reward low, so she wants to stay in the down. So anytime there's a distraction, we want to remind her to stay on place with a verbal reminder of place. So if people come over, place, we're giving her reminders, and you'll hear that in the video coming up. So to free her, we always go back to her. We don't free from a distance because we want that state to be really, really strong. So we pretend she's a little mime in a box, and we have to open the door for her. So we go back to place, reward, let her know she did a good job staying there, and then we tell her free. Time to get off the bed. So let's talk about come when called. Whenever you're practicing come with whiskey, you want to make sure that she has a safety net on, so a 30 to 50 foot long leash, especially when you're practicing in an area that doesn't have a fence. So if it's an open area, definitely have that safety net in case she chooses not to listen to your command. You have a way to reel her in if she's ignoring the remote. So she's in a free. Free means you can explore, do your thing. You just have to make sure you pay attention to the command. So if you give her a command, she still has to listen, even if she's in a free. So we release her. We let her get distracted. We call her. You can either say come or whiskey come. Here's the important part. As she's running to you, you want to praise the action of her coming to us. Because we can't throw treats at her to reward her for the action of coming to us. We can only reward when she gets to us. So whiskey come. Good girl. And you're going to back up a little bit. That invites her into your space versus standing still where she's had to run towards a brick wall back up a little bit it increases her speed because you are more inviting when you back up so whiskey come good girl back up have her sit reward we reward this command every time because we want to create a positive reward history with her coming into our space what a reward history is is it's a positive association with doing a certain behavior and getting that positive feedback every single time so we really want to strengthen that with come when called because it's a very important command if she does doesn't come when you call, no, we're going to use this first. We have the leash as a backup, but no, come, and you repeat until she comes to you. Now you still reward when she gets to you. I would reward with maybe a smaller treat or a less valuable treat for whiskey, but you still want to reward because the correction happened over there. We are still the fun good guys. Got to build that positive reward history. And then we have leave it. Leave it just means don't grab that from the floor. So practice with dogs, safe foods, drop the food on the floor, leave it. If she goes for it, 
leave it. You can just use leave it as the term for, hey, this consequence is going to happen. You don't have to say no, leave it. So those are Whiskey's commands. It's important to have fun with her, stay consistent, use these tools to follow through, make sure you reward to increase the rate of those behaviors. And now we're going to show you Whiskey's commands.
down. Good girl. Down. Good down. Down. Good down. Good down. Good girl. Good down. Free. Good girl.
Okay, so let's go over the other features of the remote collar. So we know how to turn the collar and the remote on. Let's turn them off. So same way, touch red light. Red light means it's off. Green light means it's on. The on off button in the back. Push and hold that until the screen is blank. Push and hold it until the screen lights up. So this is an on off button plus it's a flashlight button so if we just tap it we're actually going to activate the flashlight on Whiskey's collar. I really like this feature because you can see her at night. So when you put this collar on her we have this quick release. I love this addition because it has the bungee. So when we put this on Whiskey you want to make sure that the light is facing out so you have a better chance of seeing it through that mane that she has because if you put it facing down, you're not going to be able to see the flashlight at night if you want to use it. So when she's wearing this, she should wear it all day, every day, 12 to 14 hours a day. Put it on the underside of her neck and then every couple of days, make sure you put it on the other side. That way she doesn't get a collar spot because this does have to fit snug so that the contact points can make good connection to her skin. We put the little long extenders because she has a lot of hair right there. So we want to make sure these get to the skin for her and then we have the bungee quick snap. This is rechargeable. The charging port is under here. So this is waterproof. Make sure that little plastic tab is closed. That way no water, dirt, debris gets in and kind of messes with the electronics. This should last about two days on a charge. The charging port for the remote. This is also waterproof, so make sure that's closed so dirt, debris, and things and water doesn't get in and mess with the electronics. So let's go over the other features of the remote. We have this red S button. That is for emergencies only. For example, Whiskey gets out the front door and she takes off for the street and we've called her, she's not listening to this. Oh no, no button comes. So what happens is 30 matches any distraction level up to this point, but if she is over this point, 30 is not really going to have much of an impact on her, so we need a temporary boost. This is the boost button. It is going to add 30 to whatever number is on the screen. We have not needed this for whiskey, but you have it just in case you need it, and hopefully you never will, but just so you know, that's what that button is for. It's for emergencies only. Then we have the T button. This is vibrate. So I use this to make sure that when I, before I put the collar on whiskey, okay, it's on for sure, because sometimes you can accidentally tap it, and now, oh, you can accidentally tap it, and then you turn the collar off, and the collar's not going to work if it's not turned on, and then whiskey's not going to get the consequence or the follow through that she needs for certain commands and then she's not going to respect the command like she would if she got the follow through. And then this little M slash C button you don't really have to worry about. It changes the setting from momentary to continuous and right now we don't need the continuous option. That is to use on for a lower level when we first introduce the collar to make sure that she understands the stimulation is paired with treats so it's a positive not a negative for her. Then we have the dial. So right now the 1D at the top is solid. 1D stands for one dog. This can be a two dog remote. So it is solid. If we need to adjust the level we need to push down and hold until the 1D is blinking. Then we can turn it down, we can turn it up, however we need to to make sure that we can stay consistent with whiskey. So if 30 seems like it's too much for her, let's turn it down to 25 or 20. If 30 doesn't seem like it's enough, we can turn it up to 35. So we turn it to the desired level we want it at. And then we push down and hold it to lock it in place so we don't accidentally turn the collar up or down while we're working with whiskey. This also comes with a lanyard so you can wear it around your neck so you don't put it in your pocket and accidentally push any buttons. And then of course this comes with the charger. It can charge both the remote and the collar at the same time. The lanyard. The original strap that it came with, I like the bungee because one, it's easier to put on and take off and it has that little bit of give where this does not. And then we have the tool if you need to change the prongs out because it does come with shorter ones, but I just figured the long ones will probably be needed for her because I don't think you're going to get her hair cut. 
But if you do, for whatever reason, you have the shorter prongs in there. And then under here, we have the instruction manual that goes over all the buttons in greater detail. This does have a two-year full warranty, so if anything happens to the remote or the collar, within the next couple of years, you can call or contact the company and get that taken care of. So again, 12 to 14 hours a day, every day. Just because you're not going to go out and train doesn't mean she shouldn't wear this because you always want to have the option to follow through if needed. We are going to match her behavior. So if she does what we're asking, we're going to reward that. If she needs a little reminder, we're going to follow through with this equipment. That way, over time, she will naturally just fall in and do what we're asking because she understands, okay, there is a consequence if I don't, but if I do, positive. So if you have any questions, let us know. Have fun and stay consistent.